Well, hi guys, my name is Meredith Brock and I am one of the hosts of the Proverbs 31 Ministries podcast where we share biblical truth for any girl in any season. And I am here with my co-host, Kaylee Olson. Well, hey guys. You are about to hear a teaching from our friend, Lily Dunbar, who is one of the writers for our first five mobile app that we have here at Proverbs 31 Ministries. In her teaching, Lily dives into the book of Daniel and unpacks four ways to steward your season of suffering well. I think steward here is a really important yeah. word because it's easy to think of stewarding a gift well or money, but it's really hard to think of stewarding suffering well. Mm -hmm. That can be really hard to hear and really hard to understand. Yeah. And we pray that Lily's teaching encourages you to press into the season you're facing and grow closer to the Lord, knowing growth is happening even when you don't feel it. I'm really excited because today on the podcast, we actually have a First Five teacher with Yay. us. We wanted to let our friend Lily Dunbar share a teaching that she did a couple of months back on the book of Daniel. Y'all's teaching is so good. Hannah actually recommended it to me for the podcast, and so I'm really excited that we get to share it with you guys today. And we have her with us live. Welcome, Lily. Hello. It's such an honor to be here. Thank you, Kaylee, for this invitation. Of course. Yeah, we're so excited, Lily. And like Kaylee said, Lily is one of our first five writers and started writing for First Five in 2017. And that actually was the year that I came on staff. So it's fun. We started around the same time. Um, and she's actually joining us from Florida today. And as I love how our First Five volunteers, again, get to do what they do from around the U.S. And we actually even have a First Five writer who just moved out of the country. So it's really cool to yeah. see how... We're not um, we're not stopped by just being needing to be in the same city, mm -hmm. and through technology, we're able to be with Lily even in Florida right now. Um, so, Lily, with that, we're so grateful that you're here. And why don't you go ahead and dive into your teaching? Thanks, Hannah. The title of my teaching for today is Four Ways to Steward Your Season of Suffering Well." So this teaching is on the book of Daniel, and when I opened up my Bible and started reading through Daniel, the first word that jumped right off the page at me was right in verse 1, and it was the word besieged. Daniel's life was literally turned upside down when the Babylonians invaded Israel. And so the, I looked up the original Hebrew word that was translated as besieged in my ESV Bible, and it implies being confined or shut in. So it paints a picture of being surrounded on all sides by an adversary. So as Hannah said, I live in sunny South Florida, and I have never experienced a military invasion here at my house where I've been overwhelmed or confined or imprisoned. I've never served in our military like our brave heroes, but I have hunkered down at my house, and I have felt walled in more than once with water on all sides because I live in the land of the hurricane. Mm. So my husband and I have also experienced a lot of besieging because we've had some health issues and we've both had a major hospitalization where we've been confined for an extended period in a hospital battling for our health. So, and just as I sat down on the day to type down the notes for this very lesson, uh, I remember I got an unexpected phone call that morning and my husband and I just sat, stood in our kitchen and we linked arms and we prayed for protection because we just felt like it was just spiritual warfare and just obviously an attack from our enemy. So, you know, we can be standing in our own kitchen at home mm. and feel besieged, besieged by circumstances out of our control. Uh, just this morning, my husband had to pull up um, some boards on our kitchen and dining room floor because we've got a leak. We don't know where it's coming from. We had to call the roofer. It's been crazy. You know, you feel besieged unexpectedly at any moment. So as I read through Daniel chapter one and two, I'm challenged because Daniel has a very untroubled inner life, despite all the turmoil surrounding him. So I read these two chapters over and over, and I noticed there were four distinctives in Daniel's life that I think really helped him stay on course, even after life as he had once known it was disrupted. So let's go over the first point. First, Daniel determined to live purposefully. Verse 8 of chapter 1 says, Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food 
or with the wine that he drank. Rather than allow his decisions to be dictated by culture or by his circumstances, Daniel continued to choose obedience. One of the cross-references I discovered for this passage was in Psalm 119, where the psalmist declares in verse 105 that God's word would be a lamp to lead him. And then in verse 106, he says he has sworn an oath and confirmed to keep God's righteous rules. Then down in verse 112, he says he inclines his heart to perform God's statutes. The mindset of the psalmist here and in Daniel, in Daniel chapter one, was exactly the same. There was a set course of mind to stay the course, even if everything around them was unsettled. So I want to be that woman. I want to be that woman who stands Mm -hmm. on the promises and says, yes, Lord, yes to you, Lord, Mm -hmm. fully and forever. But that type of resolve it's not established in one day. It doesn't, right. It's not established on the day my roof came in. It's got to be established way in advance. And Daniel, he had a habitual practice of every day yielding his day to God in prayer and in his actions and in his interactions. And the ifs, ands, nor buts of life did not change his pattern of behavior when his city was besieged. When we're suddenly besieged by the unexpected circumstances that we don't know are coming, we can stand firm if we've already established our hearts by trusting in his word above everything else. So that's the first way. Now, the second way or the second distinctive I noticed is that Daniel stewarded his season well. And it starts in chapter two and go down to verse 14, where it says, Daniel replied with, big word, prudence. And then again in verse 23, it says, Daniel thanks God for giving him wisdom and insight. So that word prudence here, it implies having discretion and being full of understanding and wise counsel. So Daniel not only knew the word of the Lord, but he let it guide his actions and his responses. A prudent response can really diffuse a difficult situation. Um, And I want to learn how to do that better, right? So I don't have those prickly moments. Mm. So let's turn to Proverbs 15. It's a passage I personally find really convicting. Um, If you look at verse 1, it says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And in verse 2, we see how our tongues are to be used as instruments to communicate wisdom because it says the tongue of the wise commends knowledge and if you skip down to verse four it says a gentle tongue is a tree of life i really want a gentle tongue (laughs) and in verse five it says whoever heeds reproof is there's the word again prudent so skip down to verse 23 and it says To make an apt answer is a joy to a man, and a word in season, how good it is. So Daniel, he distinguished himself through his measured responses that were well-timed and carefully worded. That's hard to learn. Hmm. This is a reminder to me that I need to seek the Lord for my words, that he would let, you know, that he would give me the words to communicate. Um, difficult things and difficult circumstances when I'm facing those seasons of adversity. Mm. And I can ask the Holy Spirit to help me. I can get down on my knees right there on my bed in the morning and say, Holy Spirit, help my words, help me to communicate the right words at the right time, rather than just reacting at the heat of the moment. Mm. So we've covered two ways that Daniel stewarded a season of suffering well. First, He lived purposefully, and he continued to walk in obedience. And second, he was prudent in his communication. Now, let's look at the third. It's in chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. Now, here we see where Daniel invited his friends to join with him to really get down on their knees and intercede and pray and plead for God's mercy. Prayer, prayer was Daniel's first response, not panic. Panic, this, you know, when my heart just starts beating and beating and beating, 
where do I turn to first? Daniel turned to prayer. You know, I look at the Psalms, for example, which are full of prayers, and so many of them are prayers in the midst of suffering. And I think, for example, like Psalm 28, if you look at verses six and seven, let me read them to you. It says, bless be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him, my heart trusts and I'm helped. My heart exults and my, with my song, I give thanks to him. Wow. That's amazing. I want to have that heart. You know, both Daniel and the psalmist trusted that God was merciful and that God, a merciful God, would help them and provide exactly what they needed when they lacked strength themselves and when they needed God's protection the most. I love the encouragement in Psalm 32, verses 7 and 8, where it says, Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer a prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters, they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. That so encourages me that God's my hiding place and I can press into prayer instead of giving way to panic. And this is what helps me to persevere. It's what helps us all to persevere when we're called to walk that difficult path. Mm -hmm. Now there's one more way that Daniel stewarded his season of suffering well, and it's found in Daniel's prayer in chapter two, verses 19 to 23. Here, the text says that Daniel blessed the God of heaven who reveals deep and hidden things. In verse 23, it says, exactly, I'm going to read it to you. It says, to you, O God of my fathers, I give thanks and praise for you have given me wisdom and might and have now made known to me what we asked of you. For you have made known to us the king's matter. So I see how through all that he experienced, Daniel, he didn't take the credit himself for what happened. He humbly acknowledged that God alone was his source of strength. And he turned to worship and he worshiped God through that prayer. And he adopted that attitude of gratitude, right? Mm -hmm. He adopted a posture of praise and he did not give way to pride. And as leaders, a lot of times I think that can happen and he Mm -hmm. did not do that. The psalmist, David, and all the psalmists, often they do this as well. Um, Let's turn to Psalm 34 and look at a few verses. This is one of my favorite psalms. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. And if you keep reading, he goes on to acknowledge that he sought the Lord and the Lord heard him and he was delivered from all his fears and his troubles. Mm -hmm. God gave him that overwhelming peace. And it says in verse five, I love this. It says, those who look to him are radiant. Isn't that a great word? Mm -hmm. And their faces shall never be ashamed because the enemy loves to cover us in shame, right? But those who look to the Lord are radiant. It seems so contradictory to imagine seeing a face radiant with God's joy and peace and God's light in a dark, dark season, in a dark, dark place. But that's exactly what happens when we fix our eyes on Christ and we proclaim his name. You know, Paul talked about this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, where he challenged the early believers and he challenges us to not lose heart during difficult times. In fact, Paul said, we're called not to proclaim ourselves, but to proclaim Jesus as Lord, because God shines his light in our hearts. And now he says, we're like jars of clay. Mm. We're showing the surpassing power that belongs to God and not to us because we're his servants. So just like Daniel, our lives can shine brightly for God in a dark place as we praise his name. Mm -hmm. People will see him in and through us. So we've covered four ways that Daniel stewarded a season of suffering well. And they all started with the letter P because I like alliteration to help (laughs) remember things. So first, 
he purposed to stay obedient. Second, he was prudent in his responses. Third, he turned to prayer instead of panicking. And finally, he praised God and he humbly acknowledged that God was the source of his strength. Now, Hannah and I have talked about this a little bit before, but my family and I have been going through a bit of a roller coaster. Uh, 2019 was a crazy year. And when the year ended, I was, I, we actually kind of celebrated. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm so challenged though by Daniel's even keeled response through the ups and the downs in his life. Mm. He always had that same temperament. And I, you know, I just, I struggle with that. So yes, he was in captivity. But his spirit, his spirit was free Hmm. and his heart was so settled and at peace because he trusted, he trusted that God was God, that God was sovereign. And he didn't allow unfavorable circumstances to impact who he was, to impact his character. You know, another person whose example really challenges me is the apostle Paul. Hmm. You know, I read my new Testament. He wrote, most of it. And he wrote most of it from a prison cell. Um, It's kind of crazy to think about the fact that, you know, he would do that. Um, And when I was preparing this teaching, I was reading through Ephesians three around the same time. Um, We were going through Ephesians as a church body. And I noted that in verse one of Ephesians three, Paul, he's, he identifies himself as a prisoner, a prisoner of Christ. I thought, found that term so intriguing. And then down in verse two, just a few words later, he says that he had received a stewardship of God's grace. And I thought, wow, Mm. Paul understood he was appointed for that season. Mm. He was appointed to be a steward of the gospel through his own suffering. And I want to have that mindset. I want to be purposeful like Paul and Mm -hmm. Daniel to steward my suffering well and help others see that God is the one who's getting me through. It's his wonderful grace that is helping me. And it's his wonderful grace that sets sinners free. We need his grace in our lives. So, man, this teaching has been for me, you know, it's great to revisit it um, this time because I really needed it this week. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to close by just sharing a few verses from Psalm 31 that really, really encouraged me as I prepared this teaching. So if you skip down to verse 21, the psalmist says, blessed be the Lord for he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to me when I was in a besieged city. I had said in my alarm, I'm cut off from your sight, but you heard the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cried to you for help. And then you go down to verse 24 and he gets, he gives us kind of marching orders. Mm -hmm. And I think we can take as we finish off this teaching today, he said, be strong and let your heart take courage. All of you who wait for the Lord. Mm -hmm. So for anyone right now, you're sitting and you're listening to this teaching and you're saying, man, this is for me. I am feeling (laughs) pretty besieged right now. Be encouraged because the steadfast love of the Lord will give you strength to stand firm as you steward well your season of suffering. Mm -hmm. So we want to wait well. Lord, help us to wait well as we're walking through this season. And remember, God is fighting for you and he will always see you through. Wow, Lily. That was great. Mm, yeah. I mean, I, first of all, want to point out that I just feel like you are such a woman of resolve. Mm. And I think that I can, I can tell that because let's just celebrate the fact that Lily used so much scripture. Yeah. Like she did a teaching yeah. on Daniel one and two, but then we were hopping all around yeah. the Bible. And I just think it's so amazing um, how God has worked in your life. And it's proof that you have been a student of his word mm-hmm. and just studied. And I want to talk about that for a little bit because there might be some people who are listening to the podcast who are in a season of suffering or maybe just an unexpected season or maybe 
fearing an unexpected season. I know I'm there a lot. Um, And they might be wondering, well, what does it look like for me to actually establish a quiet time or or a routine to be a woman of resolve? And so I think it would be fun for us to go around and share some things that help us connect to scripture, because I think quiet time can look different for anybody, right? Like it can look different for you, Hannah, or you, Lily, than it does for me. And so, um, Hannah, I'm going to put you on the spot, but I'd love for you to share with the audience um, some things that help you connect to scripture. Absolutely. So one thing for this year, Kaylee, my, my husband and I talked about we wanted this year to be a year of harvest, but the first thing we talked about for a year of harvest was a harvest in our relationship with God and knowing His Word. Mm-hmm. And so we talked about how if you don't, if we don't know God's Word, if we're not reading it, mm-hmm. then we're missing a huge part of our relationship with Him because this is His way of communicating with us. Mm-hmm. Yes, with the Holy Spirit as well, 100%. But God's Word is His these are his words. Mm-hmm. And so um, for for me, I started a Bible reading plan to read the Bible in a year. That's awesome. And so there's a devotional that um, is going over. Currently, it's Genesis and Matthew and then a Psalm. Mm-hmm. And how right now it was interesting whenever Lily said something about mercy the devotion I read this morning was on mercy. And so I'm someone who I like to sit in the quiet. I don't Mm -hmm. want music. I don't want any distractions. Um, And so while the plan is in my phone on the Bible app, I am using my physical Bible so I can take notes when it comes to reading the scripture. I find that to be so helpful so I can notice little um, rhythms and patterns maybe of God repeating himself. And so really trying to focus Mm -hmm. on, well, what does this word mean? Um, And things like that. So that would be that. Yeah, that's my rhythm and routine right now with my quiet time and with the Lord. That is awesome. Lily, what about you? What do you do to make your quiet time um, meaningful? I think it changes from season to season. So right now, um, for those of you who have been following along with my story, um, we got custody of our grandson in May. So instant motherhood at (laughs) age 52. I'm, you know, laughing just like Sarah in the Old Testament. Um, So um, my mornings look really different. I have to have him up and ready to go to school at a really early time. So I have just grabbed, um, I have a book called The Daily Light. Um, on the daily path, one of the ladies cool. at church recommended it to me and uh, years ago and uh, Billy Graham and his kids used to read it every morning. Mm. I thought, well, if it's good enough for Billy Graham's kids, I think, <laughs> I, think I, I think I can handle it. So it's just a collection of scriptures um, on a theme and it took me a little while to adjust to it, but I just have that right there on my nightstand. And so first thing when I get up, I open up to the day the morning reading and I just read through it before I get out of bed and remind myself of what Lisa Turkers always says word before world. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so, um, you know, read through that. And then no matter what happens after that, if the day gets away from me and I don't have time to get back to, you know, my Bible, at least I've gotten some word in me and it was Mm -hmm. quick. Um, so that has really worked for me. And I find that when I'm going through a really hard season, um, I turn a lot to the Psalms. I mean, I just, I pour into the Psalms and a lot of times I'll read through Proverbs. So, you know, If today was like, let's say the 15th of the month, I would read Proverbs 15 and tomorrow I'd read Proverbs 16 and um, just looking for that wisdom. And I do that in addition to whatever else I'm trying to get through. If I'm doing a reading plan or if I'm doing Mm -hmm. first five up, just because I'm really seeking God um, to show me which way to go through a certain situation. I find that that really works for me. That's That's awesome. Well, I mean, that's what I like about this podcast that we have going on here because it's for any girl in any season. And so Hannah and I are in very different seasons than you are, Lily. And there might be a really busy mom listening right now who, if there's one thing she came to this podcast for, it probably was just what you said. Yeah. And that was you do what you can right now Mm -hmm. and you let that time in the morning be meaningful. That way, if you don't get back to it, then you've got what you had in the morning. So that was really great. Um, Something that I've been doing, and like Lily, you said, it's different for you in every season. 
And so something that's been great for me is in the morning, I listen to the Bible um, while I'm getting ready. And so, of course, I read my Bible as well, but I've tried to make it a daily habit of listening to it um, in different translations from beginning to end. And I think that that's been really cool to hear it spoken out loud um, while I do that. So that's been really cool. And then another thing that I love and that I've just found more peace out my day when I do it is when I write scripture. Hmm. And there are different journals that you use um, to do this. I mean, you can do it with our first sight experience, guys. But we get to later where you write out like a verse that's right. been meaningful. But I mean, you could just do it with any old journal. But to me, there's so much power in writing or I guess rewriting yes. God's word and really underlining things and getting creative with it and digging more deeply into that scripture and that's been really helpful for me so maybe these are some really great ideas for you guys um as you're kind of looking for ways to dig deeper into god's word so you can be that woman of resolve but um hannah i would love to know if there's anything that you wanted to point out about the teaching or anything that meant something to you I love, Kaylee, what you were just talking about and it what made me instantly actually go back to the four points that Lily said of he, Daniel lived a, per, he lived purposefully mm-hmm. and um, he praised God and he went to him in prayer and not in panic. Mm-hmm. And Lily, at the very beginning of this, you talked about you can even feel besie- besieged and unexpectedly in your own home. And so it just made me think of all of our podcast listeners currently of typically we are in blessings and burdens at the same time, or we're in a season of blessing, but there's also something that's daunting Mm -hmm. going on as well. And so um, I think it's really powerful to be reminded to go to the Lord first, even before going to our friends and even before going to our family, there's such power in going to God first and going to mm-hmm. him in prayer. And so I love how Lily, you shared you and your husband in the kitchen, wrapped arms around each other and you just prayed. And I can envision that. That's such a beautiful marked moment. And I feel like God's been teaching me a lot about marked moments recently. Yeah. And so I think sometimes we're afraid to have marked moments about tragic things and situations that are daunting. Mm -hmm. Um, But I feel like this teaching reminded me again, even writing out what you were saying, Kaylee. So whether it's scripture or even a prayer for you to have a marked moment with the Lord and what he's teaching you right now, even Mm -hmm. in a situation that you don't want to be in, Mm -hmm. you know, and that might be difficult, but I feel like there's such, it's so powerful even to look back on what was the scripture that was talking to you two years ago, if you're mm-hmm. writing it out to then even what can you do to write out a prayer or even just to cry out to the Lord um, and see how far God has brought you because he's been faithful in the past and is faithful now and will be faithful in the future as well. Sure. Absolutely. Well, I mean, stories like what Lily shared with us today or even what's going on in our lives, if if we don't take the time to really write it down and process what's going today, then we won't remember right. the stories. And that's testimony building too. And so, you know, you might be listening to this and think, well, I mean, I'm not on a podcast or I don't have a huge social media mm-hmm. following or whatever. You have a story to share mm-hmm. that can be helpful to to a mom in a really busy season or to another friend in college or whatever season you're in, um, the Lord is doing something in your life right now. So I love that, Hannah, um, marked moments. And I think we can look at the teaching that Lily gave us on Daniel and definitely see the marked moments in his life. Um, that still impact us today. So really, really good stuff. Well, as we wrap up today, I do just want to point out how grateful I am for our first five volunteer writers. I know Hannah at the beginning of the podcast said that keyword volunteer. Mm -hmm. And I know Lily would never say this, but on average, I've heard, and Hannah, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is a good estimate that each first five teaching takes about 12 hours to write. Yeah, it's like 12 to 15. 12 to 15 hours <laughs> of really intense theological mm-hmm. study yeah. to produce um, a teaching right. for five minutes. And I just, I mean, y'all, that's 12 hours of research. And mm-hmm. I don't want to let this moment go without telling all of our first five writers out there, if you're listening, thank you, Lily. Yeah, thank thank you, you for all the hard work that you do because it means that you are so committed to making sure that we get theological 
biblical truth right in front of people that we know we can trust. Mm-hmm. And um, thank you. Thank you so much for what yeah, you do for thank us. Thank you, Lily.